Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and I try to join the dots on abrupt climate change, try to educate the public as to the severe risks that we face from abrupt climate change, and we can't mess around any longer. You know, more and more cities around the planet are declaring a global climate emergency. We need more and more politicians you know, in countries around the world to step up to the plate. We've got to get off subsidies to fossil fuels. We have to declare a climate emergency situation. And there's actually, uh, we need to actually deploy um, carbon dioxide removal techniques and solar radiation management techniques as part of a three-pronged or three-legged barstool approach, is the way I coin it, to to have a fighting chance to... to uh, um, deal with climate change. So I was talking about the uh, Berkeley Earth um, data set, which was just released recently. And be wary always when you hear talk when you hear that 1.5 degrees Celsius or two degrees Celsius intergovernmental panel on climate change guard bands, if you like you know, safe temperature limits. The baseline, of course, is important, what it's relative to. Those numbers are originally relative to um, the year 1750, pre-industrial. So if you look at this year here, you know, and compare it to the warmest year, um, 2016, the temperature difference from here to here is almost 0 0.2 degrees, okay? So keep that in mind. And if you add that 0.2 degrees to the 1.16, you get 1.36 degrees. That's how much how warm 2018 was. Relative, or that's how warm the uh, um, 2016 was. The warmest year ever was relative to this average, the 1850 to 1900 average. So that's 1.36 degrees. Now, in order to relate this to 1750, the original pre-industrial baseline, you need to add another point, 0 0.3. Um, so that would give you um, 1.66 degrees warmer than 1750 on in the warmest year in the, in the 2016 year. So we're already above that 1.5 degrees Celsius guard band, well on our way to the two degree guard band. So we don't have this margin of error. There's there's no margin of error anymore. We're in a climate emergency. You know, we used to talk about how climate disruption would affect our grandkids. Um, but now, you know, it's affecting our kids, it's affecting us, it's affecting everybody. Everything's happening much faster than expected. So this is my uh, Twitter feed. Um, search for Paul H. Beckwith on Twitter and uh, follow me if you're not. So I'm just going to talk about some of the most recent things that are on here. Um, this is interesting. The U.S. still leads by far on scientific articles published. China is is less than half of that. Germany is very high. Uh, UK, uh, Canada is on here. The Canadian to US population is about 10 to 1. So always take the US numbers, divide by 10. That's roughly the Canada numbers. And if you're, if you're above the divide by 10, then we're actually doing better on a per capita basis. Um, so what's happening in Australia? Imagine 120 degrees Fahrenheit, 49 Celsius in the shade, even by the water. This heat wave is scorching Australia. It's drying out everything. So fire threats are enormous, wildfire threats. So let's have a quick look at this article here, since I'm wearing this could be me with the hat. Um, and the temperatures are just phenomenal. I mean, we have bats dropping out of the sky we have birds dropping out of the sky. These high temperatures are in, here we have Melbourne, the state capital, the nation's second largest city, a high of 44 degrees Celsius. Now don't forget about heat island effect, okay? A city of concrete will be, depending on the size of the city, the population, the amount of industry, the, the albedo, if you like, how dark the city is, you know, whether there's asphalt's on the roads, roofs are dark, the city will be much, much warmer than the surrounding countryside. 7.36 a.m. Friday, the city was 35 degrees Celsius. Remember that when the, when, the, when the daily lows do not drop that much at night, 
that's when people get run down, they get worn down. I remember last summer, you know, when, when we had many days in Ottawa above 35, and that was, you know, really, really warm for people. We just, we just weren't used to it. And in Quebec, a number of people died. I think 70 to 80 people died in these heat waves. And the only reason it hasn't reported in many other cities across Canada is because the numbers aren't recorded, um, you know, quickly. Um, and I haven't seen anything on, on that. Um, you know, there's huge impact. And, you know, people can go into air conditioning. What about animals? What about plants? Um, you know, and the fire threat is enormous. Um, the soils dry out, the plants uh, dry out. They're very weakened. You know, any spark from, or from lightning or human uh, carelessness, you know, fires left on, sparks from near roads, etc., cause tremendous, um, have, have tremendous you know, negative repercussions. Um, you know, I try to post a mix of climate stuff and solutions, suggested solutions stuff. Um, also some physics stuff. This is, this is a very cool device here. So what we have is you have a couple objects in this mirror, concave mirror. You put another concave reflective mirror on top with a hole in and the light bounces back and forth, back and forth, and it projects the image from the, um, the objects that are at the bottom of the first concave disk. They look like they're floating in the air. They're holograms. You can run your fingers through this, and uh, it's quite an interesting effect. Um, average death rate due to natural disasters per 100,000 population. So Nepal, you know, the, the slides, the, the avalanches, the landslides, the, the heat the um, coast, you know, all, all, all kinds of stuff. Japan is very high. Philippines, you know, these are hurricanes, Japan, uh, earthquakes, hurricanes. New Zealand actually is surprisingly uh, high. You know, it's almost two and d double. People say go to New Zealand because that's sort of a bug out place that shouldn't be affected so much by climate. Well, look at the natural disasters. You know, look how high they are down there. D almost, almost over double what the U.S. is. Um, of course, what's a natural disaster now? You know, with anthropogenic, uh, the anthropogenic world that we live in, the, the human-affected world, it's, uh, you know, there's less and less natural disasters, and there's more and more human-caused disasters. And a natural disaster is only really considered a natural disaster if, if it negatively impacts humans. If it happens somewhere remote where there's uh, very low population density, then... Um, it's not really classified as a natural disaster. More and more cities, like I say, are saying we have to declare an emergency. We have to declare a climate emergency to prompt positive emergency action, not paralysis. Catastrophe is unfolding, so call it a catastrophe. Okay, yes, be scared about it, but not to the point of paralysis. Now, this is a very interesting graphic, so I'm going to expand it. So. This is a, what this is, is this is showing, so we've got the year up here, okay? And we've got all these, we've got North America, South America, Europe, Middle East, Asia. We've got continents in bold, and we've got countries, okay? Uh, all listed here, and what we're seeing is the year is changing. So this is the... Um, from the Berkeley um, data set. We've got their global average there in Celsius and Fahrenheit, the land averages, the ocean averages. And what you can see here from this scale is the, the so these are the anomalies um, for the year 18, for years 1850 to 2018. And these are relative to the 1951 to 80 average. So what you can see is, look at all the reds coming alive. Okay, look at these huge temperatures for these countries. These, um, so this, these are the average temperatures in these countries. And here we are, uh, 2018. So I'm going to play this. This is crucial, so I'm going to play this again. Okay, so starting at 1850, right, you can see... Okay, now, because it's relative to the 1951 to 1980 climatology, the temperatures back in these years were colder, of course, than they were 
you know, in the 1951 to 1980 average, if you like. Climatology just means climate average. Okay, so what you can see is that there's less, you know, as we go forward, there's variation from year to year. Um, there's some warmer years popping in, some exceptionally warm years, but most, you know, there's a lot of blues. There's a, there's a sort of a mix around the planet. And then, you know, we have the uh, 50s here. Okay, so now we're back into the climatology years. So there's years where there's not much difference. You know, there's no color. It's basically not much change. And then we start getting warmer and warmer years as we move on. So you can find your country here and you can look at, you know, spot, look at your country, your circle, and look and see what's happened, um, you know, in the temperature average through the years. Okay, and uh, here we go. Like it's just, it's, you know, people that deny climate change basically are, are just, they're denying reality completely. Okay, so let's get rid of this. Let's go down. Okay, so this is an excellent way of displaying it. Um, what else can we talk about? The CO2 levels, 413.86 almost 414 on January 22nd. You know, there's still some scripts and NOAA data, fortunately. Um, this is Europe, the ESRL data also. And we can click on this. And this is the, this is the one year of CO2 daily and weekly means at the Mauna Loa Observatory on the top of Mauna Loa, um, a shield volcano in Hawaii. And what you can see is there is variation throughout the month. So these are monthly averages of flat lines um, with the uh, blue indication, the blue month indication. And what we can see is, you know, we were about the 412 level before was the previous peak, and now we're already getting some data that's going up to 414. CO2 in the atmosphere is rapidly rising. It's also rapidly rising in the oceans. We've changed the chemistry of the atmosphere and ocean. For three years, our emissions seem to have stabilized, but then in the last year, in 2018 and in 2017, it went up extremely rapidly. You know, I think it was 2.7% year-over-year rise last year. Um, I talked about climate change changing the male-female ratio. You know, when temperature rises, you generally get more males. When there's extremes um, causing trauma and shock and stress to pregnant mothers and you you get less males but of course rising temperature gives you more males within limits you know when you reach a high enough temperature then basically the sperm is just mixed completely um, and you know is no longer viable and it could cause a mass extinction um, tipping point in the arctic hotspot Okay, this is a very interesting article. And what I do is I, I'm kind of your filter on climate change. I kind of go through and try to put everything in context and try to um, see, uh, you know, let you know what's important. Because this is, this is as we move forward, there, this is becoming a, a more and more important um, job, if you like, or um, uh, job, yeah, job description for me. I mean... There's so much information out there on climate. You know, what is the important stuff? What is the key stuff? You know, so I'm your filter. I come up with this. You know, in this video, I'm talking about things that I've posted on my Facebook and Twitter, et cetera, that I think are the, are the uh, most important over the last week. So the Barents Sea, the problem is, is normally we have fresh water on the surface of the Arctic Ocean right? It's not completely fresh, but it's got less salt because, we, you know, a lot of the water is derived from ice that is melted. So, you know, it's a, it's a layer on the surface that is fresher, it floats. Underneath, we have saltier water, and it can be warmer, but we're getting mixing. So the, uh, the whole Barents Sea is losing its ecosystem and shifting over to, to uh, Atlantic-like conditions instead of having that fresh water on the surface. And we can go on and on here, um, but I think you've got the idea. Um, we're undergoing abrupt climate change, 
huge climate disruption, the global food supply is threatened. 